Okay, welcome back. Let's finish off uh, the last part here. So the good old guitar. Uh, how's the guitar work? Well, uh, again, it's nice. You're not here to make fun of me. This is going to be my axe. Actually, it looks like a banjo. So better make it look a bit more like a guitar. So well, there we go. Just like Axl Roses. Okay, so there is our guitar. And we're going to just clone that a couple of times here. I want to talk about a couple of situations. So for the guitar players here, you will be able to follow along and understand this with no problem. And I'm going to kind of explain it as we go for the people that don't play the guitar. So I'm only going to look at one string. So what happens, the natural rest position of that string, if you want to think of it like an x-axis, would be along there. To play the instrument, you simply pluck the string. So what would happen is your string vibrates. So it would vibrate in the blue direction, and then it would vibrate in the green direction, and then it goes into the musical chamber, or if it's an electric guitar, it's amplified through electronics. But regardless, it's that vibration on the string. If you go ahead and you shorten the string, and that's when the fingering comes in along the neck of the guitar. So we shorten the string. What happens is that you change the pitch of the guitar. So instead, same thing, I'll put that kind of x-axis on there. If you place your finger, say at this point, on the string, you will have the blue string will come and not vibrate from the, from your finger to the end. So maybe I'll make a note that that's a finger. I'm not going to bother trying to draw a hand on here. I'm already going to get mocked enough tomorrow in this class. So, so it would vibrate this way. And then, of course, it would vibrate the other way. And what we have here is a delta L. You shorten the length. So if you shorten the length, you've changed the pitch. So IE, it's a change in pitch. So where it becomes challenging, of course, is that you have multiple strings on the guitar. So it's not just one finger on one string. You've got, uh, say, five strings, six strings on a guitar, and you are learning where to place them because each string has a different thickness, different uh, density, and so on and so forth. So the guitar is a little bit more complicated than just that. So here I want to talk about the four variables that affect frequency of a string with a stringed instrument. So the first one's the length. The length of the strings uh, affect pitch, and it's inversely proportional. So what that simply means is that if you have an initial frequency, F1, and you want to move it to a different frequency of F2, the lengths would be inversely proportional. So if you knew the two lengths, you could determine by how much the frequency has changed. All right? So it's that relationship. And you can rewrite it as um, the new frequency, F2, is equal to F1, and it's multiplied by L1 over L2. All right? So that's how you would determine the new frequency. Tension. At the end of the guitar, they have, um, I guess you call them the pegs, but, or the screws, and what they do is they tighten the guitar string. So on the guitar from the previous page, up here, I'll exaggerate, you'd have a peg or a screw. If you were to twist it, what you are doing is you are loosening or increasing the tension on that string. So you can change the pitch of each string, and it is directly proportional, but it's a square root relationship. So what they have discovered is F1 over F2 is equal to the square root of the original tension divided by the square root of the final tension. And we can rewrite this, or I'll rewrite it so that you can calculate that new frequency. So F2 equals F1 multiplied by the square root of T2 over T1. And yes, you can just write it as one square root in that case. And there we go. That's how you find your new pitch based on the change in tension or the new frequency. 
Next, wires, you can put different diameter wires onto this guitar. So the first one, length is fairly challenging. Usually the length is uniform on a particular stringed instrument. So we're looking at the change of a guitar with uh, one length going to say one meter to 1.2 meters in length. What would the, that be? Tension and diameter can definitely be changed on a guitar. Uh, so how does the diameter affect it? Well, it too is an inversely proportional relationship, which means that F1 over F2 is equal to the diameter 2 over diameter 1. And if you want to write it in terms of the new frequency versus the old one, it would be D1 divided by D2. And finally, density, which is also something you can control. So technically, if you have a guitar, you're stuck with the length of the guitar, but you can still change three factors on the guitar. And this is where you get bass guitars and so on and so forth. What they're doing is they're making the strings longer, but within each guitar, they'll have different tensions, diameters, densities. So density, inversely proportional square root, which simply means that new frequency compared to old frequency is the square root of the old density divided by the square root, or sorry, the new density divided by square root of the old density. And I'm just going to clarify something here in one second. So your new frequency would be the old frequency multiplied by the square root of old density multiplied by new. For those that haven't seen that before in physics, well in science, density, we use the Greek letter R which is pronounced rho. Okay, so it's just a symbol that we've designated as our density or to represent our density. There we go. So moving on, two final examples, we'll go through them. The guitar player changes the string length from 0.9 meters to 0.4, so they've placed their finger on there. The new frequency is 500 hertz, determine the original frequency. So it doesn't matter what form of the formula you use, you'll know from your formula sheet that F1 over F2 is equal to L2 over L1. Substitute in what you know. So we know the string length. It was 0.9, so the old length is 0.9, the new length is 0.4. In terms of frequency, we know that the new frequency, which would be our F2, is going to be 500. So what was the original frequency if you wouldn't have plucked it? So the old frequency would have been 500 multiplied by 0.4 over 0.9. And when you plug that into the calculator, you get 222 hertz. So therefore, original frequency, original frequency is 222 hertz. Final example here. So determine the resulting frequency. If the string on the guitar is changed such that the heavier wire is used, so density and diameter are doubled, and the length is 10% shorter, and then the tension is tripled. So you're doing a whole bunch of stuff here. Here's the neat thing with those relationships I just talked about on this page. They all can be incorporated in. So F1 over F2 would equal. So we talk about couple of things. We talk about heavier wire, so density and diameter are involved. So density would be square root of rho 2 over the square root of rho 1. Diameter is included, d2 and d1, so it's all multiplication. You're multiplying those factors or fractions together. The length is involved, so I need to put length in there, L2 and L1. And the tension is also in there, so I need to include square root of T1 over square root of T2. So you can multiply each of those individual fractions together. So we need to figure out what the relationships are here. So let's talk about uh, the first one that was mentioned was density and diameter. They're both doubled. So the new density is equal to two times the original density. The diameter is two times the original diameter. The length is 10% shorter, so L2 
is now 90% of L1. So that's that 10% shorter. And finally, uh, what was the last one there? Tension has tripled. So my new tension is 3 times T1. So I can take all of these values and make the appropriate substitutions. So density, I'm going to write all inside one fraction. Row 2 is just 2 times row 1 over row 1. D2 over D1. Well, over there I have D2 is the same as 2 times D1. That's divided by D1. L2 is equal to 0.9 L1 over L1. And finally, my tensions, T1, oops, T1 on top, and 3, so T2 is 3 times the T1. When you write it in that format, all of those variables are unknowns. We don't actually have to know the numeric value for them. They all cancel out. So what you're really doing is you are multiplying root 2 times 2 times 0.9 times the square root of a third. And when you go through and plug that in, we find out that our frequency, F1 over F2, that's what it's been on this side of the equation all along, is equal to 1.5. All right, so then if you're looking for the new frequency, what happened to your guitar after doing all these changes, you would find that it is the original frequency divided by 1.5, or using fractions here, well, it won't be an exact value, so I won't bother with that. So it's divided by 1.5. All right. So then therefore, new frequency is um, divided by 1.5. All right. And there we go. So there's kind of your upper end question when you're dealing with stuff like the guitars and so on, so forth and so forth. Uh, uh, so you're just playing around with the fractions. Those fractions, again, can be multiplied together as they are there because each one is a particular factor, has a particular influence when it comes to the particular strings. Uh, I believe I have a handout uh, that you're working on. I think it was the original part of the original handout package at the start. Um, and we'll find that would be the section that's left to complete. So uh, that's it. That is the end of the course. Uh, good luck on the test and the exam. And it was definitely a pleasure.